Well, welcome back to another video series on my channel. My name is Steve. I'm a Flutterflow ambassador for Europe. It's great to have you here. And if you're learning Flutterflow, there is no better way to learn it than looking at real world examples. And that is what we're gonna do in this particular video series. This particular application is one I've admired for a long time because it does a number of different things under the covers, which is well worth you exploring to learn more about, and then you can apply in your own projects when you kind of get to that particular stage. So DreamBrush is available on the Play and App Stores. You can download it, you can install it, you can subscribe to it because it's got in-app purchasing. We're gonna kind of use this particular series to get up and running with DreamBrush locally on our own a sort of local environment. And then at a later stage, we're then gonna delve a little bit deeper into the product to learn a little bit more about how it actually functions. And then you can take everything you learn here and then apply it into your own particular project. So without further ado, let's get into the video and let's get cracking. to introduce you then to this particular marketplace project. Now, this is one that I've admired for quite some time when it was released probably a couple of years ago, actually, but it's still a pretty good marketplace item that um, we are going to walk through together in this particular series and get up and running. Now, the great thing about this particular marketplace application is that it's doing a number of things underneath the covers. It's using a little bit of AI to generate images. It's using Revenue Cat in terms of uh, allowing you to do then uh, sort of in-app purchasing. Uh, it's also using Firebase under the covers as well. And it's also using Angolia Search as well to provide some enhancements to the way that kind of you can search for different kind of images with inside the application as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of walk through stage by stage and get this project up and running. Now, if you were to clone this right now to Flutterfly, Flow, you're going to be presented with all kinds of errors. Now, of course, if you are fairly skilled in Flutterflow, then you'll kind of get yourself over the line with getting those errors resol resolved. But of course, if you've only been using Flutterflow for a, uh, a short period of time, then you need to be familiar with Flutterflow in order to solve some of those particular problems. So we're going to walk through a piecemeal in this particular series. Um, as we go through, then the application will come alive and then you'll be able to then get it functionally working. Now, the great thing about using a real world example, and incidentally, this application is currently on the Play and Apple stores then you'll be able to kind of uh, learn a lot from looking at a real world example where you can then apply these type of techniques into your own Flutterflow projects. And hopefully you can then build the application of your dreams, of course, uh, by using this as your example. So let's have a little look at the application. Let's see exactly what it does. If I just switch to this screen here. So this is kind of part in progress. OK, so what I've done in this particular sort of uh, part of the series, what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves to this particular place here, which allows us to get the application up and running. Of course, I'm using a local run here, which I recommend that you do with a paid subscription of Flutterflow. And here you can see the application is up and running. And you'll see I've got some images here. OK, so if I run this for the first time, I wouldn't have any images. So I've kind of got this all hooked up to OpenAI. Um, that API is being called and I'm getting images generated. And the application is pretty functional. I can move here. I can look at a series of images that may have uh, been created by other members who are using this particular application. Now, of course, I'm just running this locally in my own Firebase project. And this is the only one that I've kind of, uh, the only user I've got created is myself. I've got some albums here where I can sort of go in here and I can look at these particular images. Um, and of course, I can go into my profile here and I can update all of these details and all that kind of stuff. So um, right off the bat here, it's all up and running. It's all pretty functional. Um, there's certain things I I can't do like the searching. Um, I can't do any of the in-app purchasing, but of course we'll come back and do that at a later stage. So um, this is pretty good. Let me just demonstrate this for you as well. So I'm just going to create an image. Let's come up with something here that um, is going to work. So I guess I've just typed in here a colorful hotel on the moon. I've not really given it much information, but that's good enough. I'm going to hit generate image. Now at this moment in time, um, I've kind of got like 10 credits available to me. I can kind of change under the covers and kind of give myself any number of credits 
there. But what's going to happen now is going to make that call out then to OpenAI. It's going to kind of generate this particular image and then return it back to me at this particular stage with inside the application. Of course, if I like what is generated, I can then save that particular image to my gallery. So there we go. That's what it's kind of come up with. And I can just hit the little check here and that it, uh, and then it will then display that image then again for me that is generated. And now if I go back to then my album, you'll see that that image is currently there and I can kind of have that. I can kind of download it. I can kind of share it out. I can kind of do all the different things with it. So this is really great. So as one single user, then I can clearly see these are the images that um, I'm creating. But with this multi-user application, of course, uh, many users will be using it and you're going to see lots of different kind of images that's being created. So it's a great little application. And of course, I could just sit on this upgrade here and it shows me then some options that are available to me in order for me to do those in-app purchases and then upgrade the usage of this particular application. So that is a quick demo of the application, a bit of an overview to what we're going to kind of cover in this particular set of videos. So let's now move then on to the next bit. Okay, so then here we are then on the marketplace. Let's get ourselves up and running with this particular project. The link is in the description, of course, please do click on that and then it'll take you to this particular screen. And of course, behind the scenes here, I'm already signed in to my uh, Flutterflow account on the web. So I'm just going to hit the clone for free here and that is going to clone this particular project. It's going to associate it with my account with inside Flutterflow, which you can see happening here. And we're going to end up on the, uh, the very first page of the application by default. So here we are, we're right there. And you can see this is as you would expect to see in Flutterflow, there's nothing crazy going on here. We're kind of, we're here, we're on the widget tree page on this particular uh, sort of setup. And you can see up at the top right here, we've got lots of errors in our particular project. And of course, we're going to sort of work through those errors and we're going to correct them. Now, some of those errors will be corrected sort of, uh, sort of two or three at the same time. So don't worry, don't let that alarm you that we've got 27 errors in this particular project. So now that is all set up, the first thing that we're going to, want to do is uh, change some application settings. We're just going to kind of make some adjustments to some of the defaults that's been included with this particular application. So just click on the settings here. And here we are on the app details. Now I'm going to give my project a name. So I'm just going to call this one a digital brush. I'm just going to kind of give this a slightly different identity to what is uh, currently associated with this project. Now my package name, I'm going to change it. Now this needs to be completely unique to you. Um, so I'm going to call this one com dot the digital pro like that. And I'm just going to call this one digital brush. So you want to, as I said, make sure that it's completely unique. If you are creating many applications with inside the app store, then that needs to be associated with you, which I've kind of got here as com dot the digital pro. And then of course, this name is then going to be unique to the application that you are currently building. So once that is done, um, oh, we'll just change the uh, the display name there as well. So let's uh, just call this one digital brush. Oh, it's about right. Digital brush like that. So that is our app details all set up. Now, next up, we're gonna work on the Firebase side. So just a couple of things to mention to you about Firebase here. So this particular project uses some more advanced features of Firebase, which does require you to have a paid plan with inside Firebase. So this would be a Blaze plan. So Spark is the free plan and Blaze is the paid plan. Now, the thing is here is that although we are gonna associate this project um, with um, a, an upgraded to a Blaze plan, um, we're not going to use any uh, of the paid for features of Firebase. That's going to be quite important. Although we're going to set a cap on there, so of course it doesn't overcharge us anything, we will not be being charged for any of the features that we're going to run inside this particular application. We're not going to have the, the kind of the amount of users using it or anything like that. We're not going to get the volume that's going to mean that we're going to move into those chargeable areas of Firebase. So just bear that one in mind. So we will need to do that. So get your credit card out, get it ready, and then we'll get that associated very, very shortly. So that is it. It. Let's now head over to Firebase and let's get all that set up. Okay, so as I said before, one of the requirements of this project is to use Firebase. So please make sure you do already have a Firebase account set up. Please just Google that and get all of that set up. Come back to your project, go to app settings, click on Firebase here, and I'm going to click on create a project. Just select that. This is already filled for me. And now I'm just going to choose the region that is closest to myself. And then what I'm going to do is I'm now going to go through the sign in process here. This is just going to allow me to authenticate. And then that project is then going to set up. So I'm just going to hit sign in with Google. Okay, so now I've returned back into Flutterflow and that project is now creating. Now this will take a few minutes. I'm gonna let that play out and then we'll come back and hopefully it'll be all nice and green and then we can then move on to the next setup of Firebase. 
Okay, so projects all created, it's confirmed there with that green box. Um, one thing I, I do spot though, which is quite odd, is that the name of the Firebase project has, still says Dreambrush. So I'm not quite sure where it's actually pulling that name from, but it doesn't really matter. It's okay for this particular setup. So we now need to do a couple of other additional steps now with inside of Firebase. And the clues are on the right there. We need to enable auth on Firebase, of course, so we can then sign in and we can create accounts, all that kind of stuff. And then we need to enable storage as well. Now this particular option here, this is where it will then require us to upgrade our project from the Spark plan to the Blaze plan, but we'll come and do that in just a moment. So let's hit the Enable Auth on Firebase. That's going to take me straight off then into Firebase itself, into the actual project, and I'm just going to hit on the Get Started. Now with this particular project, we're just going to focus on having email and password authentication, but of course Firebase supports many, many other different types here. So we're going to choose email and password. I'm just going to simply tick the, or let's uh, toggle the enable here for email and password. We don't really, really need to worry about this one here. Just hit save. Now that is all set up for us. Now I'm just going to head back over now to then my project and I'm just going to use the convenience of clicking on the enable storage on Firebase. I just select that. It's going to take me off to the relevant screen with inside of Firebase. And this is where I now need to upgrade my project. So just choose upgrade project. Now I already have my, uh, my credit card already associated with my Google account and that's kind of presented here. But of course, if you haven't done that before, then please do go ahead and do this. And just one other little uh, point here is if you are a regular user of Firebase and you have quite a number of different Blaze paid plans, you could hit a particular limit. So when you kind of go through this process and into the next stage, it might come up and actually say, oh, you've, you've, hit, you've, you've hit your limit or a, an error that you might not be able to work out what it is. But typically that means that you've you've hit a limit. So go back and maybe clear out some old projects that you've got to, to free up some capacity. So just choose a Firebase payment here like that. That's going to go through, do its thing. Uh, I'm just going to here simply set a budget here. So just in case something crazy happens, I'm setting a limit on my project that I won't be charged any kind of crazy amounts. But we will not be charged in this particular setup. We're not using the level. Uh, to get charged so don't worry too much about that just hit continue and just hit link cloud billing and that's going to go away and it's going to kind of set all of that up for me which will take literally uh, there we go as quick as I've uh, said it it's done so just hit done and we are now good and now all we need to do here is just hit get started on the storage uh, I'm just going to keep this location as US central I'm not too worried about where uh, the profile pictures are going to be stored I just hit continue I'm just going to stay start in test mode. We don't want any kind of weird or crazy errors coming back to our project. So we're just going to stay test mode. But of course, if you're going to production with this, then you're going to want to make sure that your kind of security rules around the items that you are storing are pretty tied down to the users. Um, so it doesn't uh, save anybody sort of coming in, deleting any anybody else's kind of data. Now, just one point here is that, um, I just hit the create button there. Just one point to note is that um, this particular project is not going to be storing the images that get generated by the uh, OpenAI. This is purely for storing the profile pictures of the users. So don't worry about the capacity if you were looking to kind of use this particular or at least the techniques of this uh, application in your own. It's just purely doing for profile pictures. So you shouldn't see this really grow crazily unless of course you've you know got thousands and thousands and thousands of users uh, using your application. So that's it, that's storage set up. So we can now return back to Flutterflow. Um, I think we're done with the Firebase for just a moment. There is gonna be other uh, bits of configuration that we're gonna to need to do with inside our project uh, for Firebase support, but we'll gradually do those as we work through, as we start clearing down those errors with inside of Flutterflow. So for now, that's Firebase set up. Let's head back over to Flutterflow and let's start now correcting some of those errors. Okay, so let's have a look at some of these errors that we got here then. Let's see which ones we can get rid of quite quickly. So revenue cap, and we know that this application supports in-app purchasing. So let's just clear that error for the moment. We're not going to set revenue cap up just yet. Let's uh, not worry too much about that. So let's move back into the app and settings. Just move down here to then the integrations option. I think that's probably where it is. Where am I? There it is. <laughs> I'll find it eventually. Hit revenue cap. Let's enable revenue cap, but let's just put in here test app key or something like that and then just here uh, test store 
key, something like that. So we're not too worried about that. That's good. That's um, you can see up here that it's kind of now rethinking about our project, and uh, instantly, um, we've just gone and uh, uh, sort of quashed a lot of errors almost instantly by just literally putting that in, which is which is a great which is a great move. So what else have we got here? Let's um, we can we've got Angolia search as well. So let's move uh, over to Angolia like that. Uh, let's just put in uh, test app ID and then maybe just test search a key again that's something we'll come back to at a later stage but once more let's see uh, what it's quashing up the the top there for us we're down to five now so we're we are making really really good progress so what will happen is is that we'll we'll carry on doing some of these steps and it might then introduce actually some more errors that we still need to correct um so let's not worry too much about that let's now focus on just sorting out some of these now uh sort of sort of firebase issues and, and stuff like that so let's have a look here let's move over here on the left hand side uh in fact yeah let's go here to then the fire store option let's move over to the little cog here like that we've got some various little bits that we need to do in here you can see here we've got various sort of indexes and all this kind of stuff that's not currently being deployed so um we can just do that let's just hit the little deploy there let's kind of get our application set up there's obviously some pre-configuration in this particular app so let's kind of get fire store updated with some of this stuff and then hopefully then some of those errors will uh disappear appear for us so just leave that to do its thing so that's all done so um, at this point let's see if we can also do the delete user references as well just hit that there um, this application does actually support users um, actually deleting their user account uh, which is uh, all, all good applications should uh, be providing that as a feature because uh, when users no longer wish to use your application they kind of want to make sure that all of any of the details associated with them are removed so let's just uh, hit that this might take just uh, a few moments Okay, so straight away we've, we've got an error back, and um, I was probably a little bit um, over um, excited about pressing that at this particular point. There's other Firebase setup that we we probably need to do. So let's um, let's go back into then the app settings here. Let's go back to then Firebase, and let's look at kind of getting some of this stuff uh, set up and deployed for us. So we need to uh, deploy these storage rules here. So let's just hit the little deploy option. Just say yes. So again, these are these are some specific rules for this particular application, but we're just going to let that uh, play its thing. There we go. So it took a little moment to get going. So we're just going to leave that to play out. Okay, so we've inside the APIs section of our project. Now, this particular one uses uh, private APIs. Um, it's kind of like using like a cloud function there that's deployed with inside your project, uh, your Firebase project is almost acting as like a bit of a proxy. So our, our application will sort of call out to the private API. The private API will be like a like a custom function that gets run um, that then calls out to the open API platform. So we need to deploy this as a cloud function. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set this value here down to a zero, just purely because that is what is recommending here um, off the bat. Um, we don't really need to worry about kind of increasing this particular load on our applications this particular time. So that is all set. And now I'm just going to hit the deploy API here. That will take a moment to deploy as a cloud function. I'm just going to leave that to kick off. There we go. Um, that might take a, a sort of two or three minutes to deploy. So I'm just going to leave that to do its thing. So I think it's just important to point out at this particular point with our particular application. Obviously, we're just going through kind of like a, a setup of kind of like a, a sample application to prove that everything kind of works here. But if you were using this as a real world scenario, you're really running this um, in production, then it's likely that you would need to make sure that you set these instances to kind of like at least a minimum of one there because you don't want your application to have any kind of delays in invoking API requests. So if, uh, for example, if you've got a, a low usage in your particular application, you might have maybe one or two users that may be using your application over a set period of time um, over after a period of time the kind of the function will kind of go into like a dormant state with inside firebase itself and of course then the next request comes in will then require that kind of function to kind of spin up and kick into life okay now there's going to be a certain delay there for that to kind of happen but in a real world scenario and where you have multiple users you want to make sure that those functions are accessible really really quickly so you would then make sure that you control this here in this particular section here by setting kind of minimum instance 
instance of ones. Um, so of course, if you're in a like a, a very small usage scenario where you've got like a, a small set of uh, users but a frequent usage of your application, then setting this to maybe one here is is actually is, is pretty good, and setting a max as well just to control those particular limits. But as uh, as you as you scale your application, then you can then scale these values up. But of course, the the knock on to that of course is that then there's more costs than associated with your particular project. So I just thought it's worth just maybe explaining that just a little bit more. So there we go, we're all deployed, we're all up and running. That is really, really good. So I think we're in a good place now as far as uh, some of the uh, Firebase uh, setup is concerned. There's just a couple of bits, other bits that we need to deploy very, very shortly. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna head back over now to Firebase um, and we are gonna take actually, just before we do that, one thing we wanna make sure that we do is we just want to go to app details. We wanna kind of copy this to the clipboard because we are gonna be using that in the next step. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you found that useful. Now, of course, if you are interested in Flutterflow and the no-code space in general, please do go and check out the Digital Pros No-Code Academy. I've got lots of sample applications, more video content, written articles, and there is a fantastic community there as well. So please do go and check that out. But of course, if you just want to stick on YouTube, no problem at all, please do subscribe. And of course, hit the notification bell, and then you'll be notified when new content drops. So until the next video, I'll see you soon.